Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to experiment a bit with stock data and the stock history function in Excel. So I was checking this out earlier, but let me start from a clean slate because this is really easy to do. So I'm just going to delete all of these columns that I was playing around with earlier. I'll close that warning. I'll mention that in a minute. And I'm going to start off here in cell A2, and I'm going to type in what I believe are a few uh, ticker symbols. So I'll put in uh, GameStop. Obviously, that's been the exciting one for the week. Excuse me. I'll put in uh, Apple, MSFT for Microsoft, and um, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll just experiment with those few. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select those ticker symbols, and then on my data ribbon in Excel 365, I was already over there, but I could have been on the home ribbon. But on the data ribbon, I'm going to click Stocks. And it's basically going to look up those ticker symbols and give me some more detailed names for them. Now, at a glance, you're like, all right, well, what's the big deal with that? But this is a pretty neat little feature. Let me maximize or increase the size of that column. And you're going to notice it is going to give me a little warning up here. Financial market information is provided as is. It's probably not exactly in real time, so you're probably not going to want to do any active trading based on this. But still pretty interesting. But here's what I wanted to show you. Now I can select these three names and I can use this little button up here. When I click this button, I'm going to get a list of all of these characteristics that I can choose for the individual stocks. For instance, I can go ahead and choose price. I see price on the list and it's going to display the prices for those lists. They're relatively current when the market's open. I'm recording this video at 3 p.m. Pacific, so markets have closed for several hours now, a couple hours at least. And um, and so that would ultimately be the closing price for today. But that was pretty cool. And then I can just keep adding more information. What is the uh, previous close? There we go. And of course, it's not putting any column labels, so I have to do those by hand. Price, previous close, and we can kind of see how things have changed. So for instance, GameStop closed yesterday at a little over $92. And it is closed basically today at 53 so it's a pretty huge drop so there's a lot of interesting things going on there now if you were to click on a particular stock name you can press Control shift F5 and you will get quite a bit of data and in fact all of the data that you see here is something that you can choose for that particular ticker symbol and it'll display it and I say well, all right it's pretty neat there are a few symbols which won't display all the data you want so I was wondering if there was a good index that I could display. So I typed in the uh, Wilshire 5000. It's thinking, it's not quite sure, but it does give me a little key that I can click and it'll give me some options here. I want the Wilshire 5000 index fund, uh, mutual fund. Okay, sure, I'm gonna select that. It's given me some confirmation data over here on the right. And then down at the bottom, there's a select button I can click. It's behind my little uh, picture. And then it gives me that full data. So, okay, great. It's kind of a bummer. It doesn't populate it with the existing data that I've already asked for. So, so for this particular fund, I would have to go for, all right, let me display the price. Great. And now let me click. And can I display a previous close? Let's find out. Oh, cool. That worked. Not a lot of uh, variation in some of these index funds because it'll change the number of uh, shares. However, uh, the bloom starts to fall off the rose here because... I can't get all kinds of data. For instance, I don't know if I can get like a 52 week high or anything. Actually, it's very limited. I don't have as many options as I did before. So that's what's going on there. But let me show it to you this way. If I select all four, then there's fields which I have access to for most of these stocks like 52 week high, but it doesn't show up for that particular exchange traded fund. Okay, so that's pretty neat. A lot of great data that way so that you can display some stuff. Now, the next function I wanted to try is stock history. And I was really bummed to find out that it's not available on my Excel 365, which I get through my school. And apparently they don't have all of the functions. So let me bring over a blank session of Excel 2019. Let me zoom in here. And then what I'm going to do just off to the side to make things easy is I'm going to type in MSFT. And then I'll go ahead and put in a starting date of January 1st, 2000, and a closing date of uh, December 31st. Actually, no, I'll put in today's date. 
if I can type it, equals today. There we go. And so now that I've got that information off to the side, I'll put it over here, I can do equals stock history, the stock history function. And it has a number of parameters. Now the first couple are really obvious. What stock do I want? Well, I'll click on the cell that contains the stock, comma. What's my start date? I can type a starting date in quotations, or I can just click on the cell that contains my start date. End date, I'll click on the cell that contains my end date. And I could just stop right there. It's going to think for a second. Let me make this nice and wide. So now I have um, prices, closing prices, for all of those particular days. I'm going to make one little tweak to this off to the side. Equals stock history. Um, the stock, the starting date, the ending date, but then there's other parameters. These are pretty neat. So by default, it's going to be daily, but I could choose to put in weekly, so the value of one, um, and comma, Headers, do I want headers? Sure, let's show some headers. And properties, what do I want? Yeah, I want the close, which is probably what it's gonna to default to anyway, but I'll do that anyway. Close, closing parentheses. But what I wanna draw your attention to, these are gonna be weekly closes. It's gonna think for a bit. So if I look through my data up here, I'm looking for the matchup. Let's see, so 5838. Not seeing that one. 5572, ah, there it is. So I'll bold it, and then the next one is 5613. Ah, I think it's down here, it's this one. So basically, these are probably the Fridays. Um, in fact, I'll find out real quick. What's the weekday of that date? Yep, six, that's the code or value for a Friday. And I can just autofill that down. Yep, so I'm seeing the Fridays. So now we have all of that data, basically 20 years of data for the Friday closes. And of course, then you can easily take this data and uh, put it into some charts and things like that if you wanted to compare weekly data. So I didn't find a great way to find good index res results, but there is some work on that it looks like, and there are some index values you can get. All right, so have fun. That's the stock history function in Excel. And of course, some of you may have this available in your web-based Excel 365 versions. Take care.